So you want to learn about walnut blasting. Well, you came to the right place. While this video will feature a lot of specifics to the EcoBoost platform, carbon deposits are endemic to many gasoline direct injection engines. I've created this video as the one that I would have liked to watch before I got into this process. So if you found this edutaining, I would really appreciate it if you could like, comment, subscribe, share, and that shows me that you got something out of it. I'd really like to keep making videos like this. Your support shows that I'm heading in the right direction. I'd also like to point out that everything I do is in promotion of grassroots motorsports. It's been such a fun hobby and lifestyle for me, and I want to help people find it too. You could look for your local autocross, track days, and more at motorsportreg.com. Thank you, and please enjoy. Hey guys, this is Pete Brushy Racing here. In the last video, we talked about my 2015 Ford Mustang EcoBoost, how I've put it through over 150 days on closed courses, 90,000 miles daily driven in four years. We've managed to avoid the dreaded eco boom. We've taken care of this car despite all the beating on it that we do. We talk about basic mechanical sympathy and how you should treat your engine no matter what you're driving. We've also talked about direct injection engines and the issues with carbon deposits. My Mustang has been having some little drivability quirks that I suspected were due to these carbon deposits. So not only did I plan to clean these carbon deposits, but I wanted to document the dyno results before and after to see how much power was this car losing due to this carbon buildup. We've done the cleaning, we've done the testing, and I can say that the results are incredibly significant. But before I tell you the numbers, I really want you to watch this video in its entirety, especially if you were planning to do this procedure yourself. I wouldn't take this as a specific tutorial, but more as this is what you're getting yourself into. And if you've never been inside of an engine before, this isn't the best procedure to start on. If you attempt this walnut blasting procedure, the risk is on you. You need to be extremely careful and meticulous because you are literally putting dirt through your engine. Watch this video in its entirety, see what I went through, and decide for yourself if this is something that you need to do for yourself or if you should find a qualified shop to do it for you. Today is the day we are finally going to crack open this engine and fill it up with walnuts. You guys are nuts. That's right, I said walnuts. Walnut blasting is what's recommended to clean off carbon deposits that are resulting from direct injection. There's some PDFs from Ford floating around online. However, even with the PDFs, it's not always straightforward to know what you're looking at. The top side is pretty straightforward. You've got a variety of connectors, trim clips, nuts and bolts to remove. These are pretty easy to see. Now what's not so easy to see is what's on the bottom side. The way the intake curves, it's kind of difficult to see what you're looking at. Be careful removing the charge pipe. It will be pretty stuck on the throttle body. Well, that's pretty gross. The next big obstacle you'll face are the retaining clips on the vacuum lines. Modern cars these little brittle plastic clips. A lot of people are struggling with these clips. I've just done a video on this. Watch this video. I show you a couple tricks how to get these out without breaking them. The sensors on the bottom side are also tricky. I don't even know how the fuck that's supposed to come unplugged. A bunch of shit. Carefully use your trim clip tool to pry these out. Yep, the clip is hoop a -jook. One on the back side was destroyed before I even got in here. Oh, I'll bet that's been off before. You're just like, fuck, out of those special clips. Get a zip tie. Come on, man. What'd you forget? Let's put those diagrams back up again. He might get that thing off eventually. Eventually. Ah, oh, the engine. What a pain in my ass. Damn!
This is heavy. Before we get too deep, let's take a look at what we found inside of the intake. That's oil in my intake. Gross. Every square millimeter of the intake and the charge pipes were coated. It's really important that we get all this off. There's nothing here a little spit shine wouldn't fix. Spit shine! Spit shine! <laughs> if you're doing a job like this, you can't just whip out a can of brake clean and go to town. Even carb cleaner is way too harsh for these modern components. For the plastic intake and sensors, we're using mass airflow sensor cleaner. It says right on the can there, this stuff is safe for plastic. But we're even still gonna be careful. We don't wanna spray the gaskets directly. Gaskets don't tend to like being sprayed with chemicals, so we're just gonna leave those. We also made sure to spray that sensor pretty good in there. A lot of these cleaners tend to evaporate pretty quickly, so to get more working time with it, you could soak a rag with it. You saw before how disgusting the throttle body was. Let's go ahead and get that cleaned off. This very well could have been contributing to a lot of my drivability issues. A little harsher of a chemical, throttle body and air intake cleaner. Now it does say intake cleaner, but you'll note on the back of the can, do not spray on painted or plastic surfaces. This is entirely plastic. You can't just read the front of the can, you gotta read all the way around the instructions and see, because it's better that you find out than by melting your intake. Auto body cleaner has found its way into the cut. Um, not the spiciest thing I've had. I would compare that to jalapeno. On his peak. Not terrible. Wow, nice and shiny. Yeah, look at that. Even build up along the, the edge of the blade and don't forget to wash behind your ears. Well, that's a pretty big difference. Let's keep digging. This is where the fun begins. The valves are absolutely disgusting. You can see the ball of carbon forming on the valve stem has got to be doing something to the airflow. The buildup was considerably worse on cylinders three and four. The vacuum line that's just past cylinder four feeds the brake booster must be sucking a lot of oil back that way. We removed the spark plugs, that way we could turn the engine over by hand easily. And we put the coil packs back on because we don't want anything going into the top of the engine because the cylinders are basically open now. And we've taped off all of the ports that we won't be working on. It's a 21 mil on the crank and we're turning clockwise that way we don't inadvertently loosen the crank pulley. It's turning pretty easy. And we're gonna turn until we see the valve stop moving and it's closed. You need to make sure the valve is closed when we're working on each cylinder because we can't have that walnut stuff going in the engine. On the EcoBoost four cylinder, only one of the cylinder's intake valves are open at a time. It's best if you keep that open cylinder as far away from the one that you're working on as possible. The most harsh chemical that we'll be using, the intake valve and turbo cleaner. Now a lot of OEs don't recommend you do this procedure of spraying chemical in while the engine is running. You gotta be really careful doing that. That's a lot of damage. So the reason we're using this is we're just gonna pre-soak the closed valves in the cylinder before we go and use the walnut blaster. We're gonna try to kind of loosen some of that um, particulate carbon buildup on the valve. And that way the walnut blaster won't have to work so hard. What I like about spraying the cleaning solution in there first is it's a double sanity check that you've got those valves all the way closed. They seal up pretty good, so just let it soak in there. Go uh, do something else for a couple minutes. And then uh, if there's still fluid in there, I would say that it's sealed. It's much better to get this stuff down into your cylinder than some hard particulate. This stuff will dry, the particulate will 
end up in your turbo. We're gonna use the old Head & Shoulders brand siphon to get that liquid out because we can't put that stuff through the shop back. This stuff is flammable. I'll blow up the vacuum. It's worth pausing and pointing out here that I did another boneheaded thing. I should have masked off this charge pipe. Luckily this pipe was so coated in oil that most of the walnut seemed to stick to the charge pipe, but we still took off the intercooler and hosed it out because there was oil in there as well. If you're gonna dry this solution out of the cylinder with the blow gun, make sure you, you wrap the rag around it really good and try to get it all in the rag. Go slow, don't go full bore because this stuff will spray out in every which direction. It will uh, get on stuff if you're not careful. You don't want to get this on any surface that you really care about. It will stain it. With the cylinders pre-soaked and dried out, it's time to bring out our next guest. <laughs> Let me show you its features. Our Walnut Blaster is the cheapest unit Harbor Freight sells. With the fine grit abrasive media, the parts for the vacuum cleaner, and a few other bits and pieces, you could put together your own setup for less than $100, provided you already have an air compressor. We took a regular vacuum hose adapter kit, took a step bit, and drilled it out to about the size of the wand. What's nice about buying the adapter kit is I've got all the rest of the adapters and uh, the little tight place wand, and that way we're getting the most of it out of there before we have to switch to the blow gun. The gun is a little rendition of the Harbor Freight Special Extended Blow Gun. Cut the end off of it, it had like more of a bend on it, so we just made it a little shorter. To adapt the blow gun to the Walnut Blaster, we took out the forward set screw and just jammed the thing in there. We didn't have it working so great, I ended up having to wrap some Gorilla Tape around the blow gun end, and that seemed to do the trick. It works, and uh, it doesn't leak either, so that's good. Let's hook it up to the blaster. You're definitely gonna want safety glasses for this as this stuff can get anywhere. Move the blow gun around the port, pull it away from time to time to check on your work. You can see the carbon deposits are breaking off the valve nicely. We've still got a little to go on the valve stem. Once you're happy, suck out the media that's left behind. And whatever you can't get with the walnut blaster, you could try to use a pick. You can soak the valves again to try to soften this build up further. And remember, all that grit that you put in there must come back out. Use whatever tools necessary to remove all those walnut shells. I even used a USB bore scope on my phone to make sure that everything was out. There, wasn't that fun? One valve clean, only seven to go. Don't worry, I'm not gonna put you through all of that. I know what you really came here to see. This channel. No! No!